bright beauty every student matters hello students i am shivika khurana and today we will be discussing the fourth chapter in chemistry which is carbon and its compounds now before we get into the chapter it is it is also important that you understand why is it that carbon gets a special chapter of its own what is so special about this one element that there is so much to study about it so the first reason is that carbon is present all around us it is present in the air that we breathe it is present in the food that we eat and it is also present in the earth on which we stand now let's uh, understand this further so as you can see here that carbon makes 0.3% of the earth by in form of carbon dioxide you may think that is very loss uh, very less percentage but actually it is there in the air with for two important processes one respiration and another photosynthesis so these two processes which give us food and give us energy are uh, carried out with this 0.03% of carbon dioxide present in the air second is all the living structures now you may just think that carbon is present in human bodies but it is not true it is present in humans it is present in animals it is present in trees in the clothes that we wear which we derive the fiber from the plants and all forms of life no matter what have carbon in it so carbon is there in all the basic life forms and that is why it is also it was earlier also called as organic compounds so all the compounds which had carbon in them were called organic compounds because it was believed that carbon can only be there in uh, only in the living structures now that is the second uh, presence of carbon uh, why we need to study it so much and the third is in the earth crust so it is present in the earth crust in form of carbonates uh, hydrogen carbonates also in form of coal which we use uh, for burning uh, which we burn to create electricity and that is how thermal power plants work and is there in petroleum which we use to fuel our vehicles so now you have seen that carbon is essential to so many processes that go on around us and that is why we need to study it specifically on its own now let's understand the basic structure of carbon first carbon's atomic number is 6 which means in the k shell there are two electrons in the l shell there are six uh, there are four electrons and that is why the total atomic number becomes 6 the atomic mass of carbon is 12 so that is the electronic configuration of carbon why am i telling you this you'll understand this better as we go on now some basic properties of all the carbon compounds are they are poor conductors of electricity that is they do not conduct electricity from one point to another they have low melting and boiling points they are usually present in liquid and gaseous forms and they are insoluble in water but soluble in organic compounds by organic compounds i mean things like ether So why does carbon show all these properties you must be curious to know why is it that all carbon atoms don't conduct electricity or why do they all have low melting boiling point occur in liquid form and all that to understand these properties better we first need to understand what is the structure of carbon and how does it form compounds with other uh, other elements once you understand that you will be able to understand why these properties are shown so we'll come back to them later first let's talk about the electronic configuration of carbon now here's the nucleus of carbon atom in the first shell there are two electrons in the second shell there are four electrons right k2 l4 now to achieve a stable configuration it needs to have eight electrons in the outermost shell how does carbon get eight electrons in the outermost shell it has two options the first option it has it can gain an electron so if it gains four electrons and this becomes eight uh, it adds four more electrons here there and there then it will have a stable octet but a new uh, 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 a nucleus which has only six protons so small nucleus cannot actually hold 10 electrons right so to hold 10 electrons it is not possible for a nucleons uh, for a nucleus with the uh, six protons to hold a new uh, to hold 10 electrons and that is why this is not an alternative so although there is a possibility that carbon gains four electrons and forms a c4 minus ion this does not happen why does it not occur this is because the protons in the uh, nucleus are fewer and the six uh, small protons cannot hold 10 electrons now let's come to the other alternative which is losing electrons it can lose all these four electrons and then it will have a stable configuration of k2 but what happens is 
in the carbon atom here are the two uh, electrons in the k shell now in the l shell once i take out one of the electrons out there is the energy hold of the uh, nucleus is stronger on these three right these three get stronger energy hold now now if i remove another one the much more energy will be required to remove uh, this one and to remove this one later on so what happens is that for carbon to lose four uh, electrons it will have a lot of energy will be required to remove all the four uh, electrons present in the outermost shell and such energy is not present in usual chemical reaction and that is why this option is also removed right so for carbon to uh, become c4 plus and lose four electrons is also not a possibility now since it can neither gain electrons neither lose uh, neither lose electrons it can neither become an anion neither become uh, nor become a cation then what does it do it goes on to the second alternator rather than forming ionic compounds it forms alternative bond which is called as covalent bond a covalent bond is when atoms share electrons as simple as it sounds two atoms come together and there is a sharing of electrons so the electrons which are shared belong to both the atoms present in the bond and it is a not strong bond and cannot be broken down easily now let's take some examples to understand better how does this work now for hydrogen hydrogen has one electron in the outermost shell there's another hydrogen atom which also has one electron in the outermost shell they share these electrons so both of them have two electrons in the k shell and that is how they have achieved a stable octet in hydrogen gas so this is the structure of hydrogen gas the uh, in hydrogen gas uh, electrons are neither lost nor gained rather they are shared by two atoms similarly it happens so in chlorine by the way when you are drawing these diagrams they are called as electron dot diagrams So electron dot diagrams are when you represent electrons with a dot, or you can also represent it with a cross. When there are two different elements, then you rep uh, represent one with a cross and one with a dot. Now let's move on to chlorine. So chlorine has seven electrons in its outermost shell: one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, and se uh, seven. There's another chlorine which also has seven electrons. They share one electron with each other. and achieve a stable configuration this uh, this is how chlorine gas is there this bond is represented by a dash so here it is h dash h when one electron is shared there is a single dash when more than one electrons are shared it is a double dash we'll go on to that later now oxygen has six electron uh, six electrons in its outermost shell now to stabilize it cannot share only one electron it needs to share two electrons so its valency can be met and to do that they share two electrons and that is why it is represented by two dashes in between the oxygen atoms right so this is the electron dot structure and this is the normal explanation of the bond which shows that there's a double bond it suggests that two electrons are being shared given in the sharing by each atom now let's step uh, let's step further and try to understand how does different elements combine so covalent bond can also be between two different elements so far we have done elements of same nature so hydrogen with hydrogen chlorine with chlorine oxygen with oxygen now let's understand water water is represented by h2o you all know that so the structure of water is actually like this one oxygen atom combines with two hydrogen atoms in a covalent bond so oxygen has six electrons One, two, three, four, five, six. Hydrogen has one electron that it needs to share. Now hydrogen shares one electron with uh, oxygen, so does the other hydrogen, and the oxygen atom shares one one with each, and that is how it has achieved a stable position. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is how the water molecule is formed. Now it is also possible for atom to share three electrons each. this happens in the case of nitrogen
yeah so nitrogen has an atomic number of uh, 7 which gives it 5 electrons in the outermost shell and when it shares 3 electrons each with another nitrogen atom it forms this bond so 3 pairs of electrons are being shared 6 electrons in the sharing 2 in individual electrons and this is how nitrogen forms a triple bond with itself so this kind of uh, bond is called as a triple bond this is a double bond and these are single bonds. Single bond is when one electron is shared, double bond is when two electrons are shared and triple bond is when three electrons are being shared. Now let's understand how does carbon use this property, how does carbon form covalent bonds. So the most basic form is that carbon has four electrons in the outermost shell, we already know that. Carbon shares each electron with hydrogen. Since hydrogen is present in the nature, It shares it with hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen atoms achieve a stable share, uh, K shell with two atoms each. And carbon achieves eight, uh, eight electrons in its outermost shell. Right? And this uh, compound is also called as methane. Why is it called methane and how do we name compounds of carbon? We will do that later. But so far we have understood that. Uh, some elements which do not want or do not cannot uh, lose or gain electrons to form ionic compounds form covalent bonds. In covalent bonds, electrons are shared and uh, they can be represented by electron dot structures and they can be shared in uh, single, double or triple bonds. Based on these properties, now you will better be able to understand the properties that we did before. So why is carbon a poor conductor of electricity? Because to conduct electricity, you need ions, you need positively and negatively charged particles. But uh, when, when covalent bonds are formed between carbon and hydrogen or between carbon and uh, any other compound, then what happens? The, there are no free electrons to conduct electricity and that is why electricity is not conducted by compounds of carbon. They have low melting and boiling point. This is because the bond between the carbon and carbon atom, the covalent bond is very strong. But the bonds uh, in between two molecules are not very strong and that is why the molecules uh, have low melting and boiling point and also are present in liquid and gaseous state. They are insoluble in water for the same reason because they cannot ionize. Right? And the they are soluble in organic compounds. So we have understood that carbon compounds have uh, poor conductor, are poor conductors of electricity, have low melting and boiling point, are insoluble in water, get, sol uh, get dissolved in uh, organic compounds like ether and that is because of the covalent uh, bonds that it forms in the compounds.